Welcome everybody. We're doing a Korean barbecue tonight and I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we have prepared. Really, I should say that Nidia has prepared, but we're going to all cook together because this is kind of a family thing that you do together and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, we have different chili sauces, hot sauces, sweet and tangy sauces. We got a little bit of everything over here. And here we have our dim sum chicken and pork appetizers, which are really cute looking. So I like those. And it sounds like we have a guest who has just arrived. I'm going to get some portobello mushrooms with some peppers. These are sizzle steaks that she's marinated in Korean barbecue sauce all day. And over there is some ribeye that I sliced thin the same way. This is the Korean barbecue itself. Underneath, we got some cheese that I've got going there. And on top, there's some oil and garlic. And I'm working my way down towards marinated shrimp, kimchi, with, which is fermented cabbage and some onions and we will get back to you guys after dinner it's quite the spread looks awesome Alright, welcome back everybody. This is Dwayne from Dwayne and Nidia's Travel Food and Fun. And I would like to, today I want to present to you pea soup. Uh, I love making pea soup. It's something I've been making for many years. I don't do it like everybody else. So I'll show you the way I do it and hopefully some of you will give it a try. It is a bit of a process sometimes. I have a couple approaches. Most of the time it's a two day process because the first day is really prepping the peas. I like uh, this Hearst ham peas. It comes with a little seasoning packet, which I've actually found is pretty good. So I use Hearst ham peas. I used to use Goya, but they are very, they, they require extra cleaning. Uh, you'll see in the pictures I've included in the video where I actually separate what I call bad peas from the good peas that we like to eat. And I did a side by side comparison and you'll see the difference. Um, I also uh, soak these peas. I soak them overnight. I let them do the 24 hour soak. Uh, I like to rinse them several times. You'll even see a difference in the water. I share a picture of that. When I first put them in the water, how cloudy and green and whatnot it gets. And then after multiple rinses where not only does the cloudiness go away, but it removes extra skins that are in the bags and stuff and things that you don't just always expect to find. So as you can see, I've prepped the carrots by dicing them up by hand. I don't use a food processor for anything. I dice everything by hand. Uh, the, I used lots of ham in here. Uh, we, I use a good chunk of a ham bone. I like my onions. I put in parsley. I use salt, pepper, garlic for seasonings. And I really season it to taste. Right now, this is a stage most people never really get to see, unless you're making it, where the peas haven't broken down yet. And it's still all the ingredients are separate. Once the peas break down after several hours, everything will come together and all these carrots, I mean, sorry, all these onions and parsley floating on the top will get pulled into this actual soup that we're making here and it, it'll just start to look like the traditional pea soup that everyone's used to. And I have one more secret ingredient I like to add and I'll show you that later on. So, welcome back everybody. Um, the pea soup has been cooking for several hours now. It's in a crock pot, so it takes a while. It's an easy six to eight hour cook to do in total. Uh, it's still on high. It's been on high since it started. I took the ham bone out a little while ago, and the peas are just now starting to break down a little bit, where you can see it. So I just added the carrots now. I expect this to need another hour and a half to two hours of cook time before these peas fully start to break down. But I didn't want the carrots to completely break down along with the peas because otherwise you end up with a brown mush and nobody likes that. Go. All right guys, so now 
right. I've added in the carrots. They've cooked up. And I'm at the point now where I'm adding in sour cream as my secret ingredient that no one really seems to add. It uh, definitely makes it a much smoother mixture in the end. And hold on a sec. I'm going to use a whisk to actually incorporate it in. So in the when you make this from the dried peas, it actually calls for about, each bag calls for like 10 cups of water. I don't use a lot of water. I actually will use a container of like chicken broth instead. Or you can use water, which you add bouillon cubes to. And um, I actually try to... Um, So I actually try to make it so that I just make it to taste and I don't like to use a full 10 cups of water per bag. There are two bags in here and I did not add 20 cups of liquid. So I probably added about 16. And as I stir it, it'll actually incorporate a little better. It's already going to start, as you can see it's starting to look creamy as the sour cream is breaking down. I let this go for another half an hour and it is all set. It'll be done, ready to go. And we'll plate it, and I'll show you when it's ready and we're plating. All right. Woohoo! Time for pea soup. Dwayne, is it ready? Ready. <laughs> that wasn't ready. What's it need? I'm just garnishing. Ready. There you go. That's it. I'm going to try it out. I haven't tried it since a while. Uh, I do want to mention, as you cook the pea soup, you have to stir it occasionally, even once it's done. Pea soup likes to separate. Uh, as it cools, it really thickens up, and it may even have a layer of uh, liquid on top. You can either drain the liquid off the top or incorporate it back in as you reheat some when it's later on. But um, done this way with the sour cream inside of it, it does not separate much at all, if at all, but it, and it does become very thick. So, oh, let's see how thick it is. Right now it's just a medium thickness as opposed to how thick it gets when you go back to it a second time. It did come out really good. It's got a good level salt level to it. It's not too peppery, but it has a little bit. And uh, the carrots are cooked right through, no problem, but they didn't dissipate. So, like I said, that was about an hour, hour and a half, hour and a half or two hours before I finished it off. And, uh, and that's it. It came out very good. She's ready to go. Uh, thank you for checking out our video. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.